Welcome. In this video, we're looking at the total direct unsubsidized loans. So these are loans where you actually build up interest in your college years, and it's not covered by the government. It's not subsidized. Subsidized loans are covered. The interest is covered by the federal government. So the first thing I would do is get in your total unsubsidized loan values for each freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, and the total. Now, instead of just typing those numbers in, I'm calling to the first sheet, in this case, cell E12, first sheet E8, E9, E10, and 11. Those are where I have my direct unsubsidized loan values. So before you just go copy and paste these formulas in, before you make any adjustments, make sure you're calling to the right cell. So look on your first sheet. First, the direct unsubsidized loans, my first total appears in E12, that's what the cell is. Then for freshman year, it's an E8, sophomore year E9, junior year E10, and senior year E11. So make sure you have the correct values, and then once you do, you can just copy, paste, and delete these quotation marks, and you'll have those right numbers in. Now, here as I'm doing this, you can see what those numbers should be. So if you're not getting these numbers, something is wrong. Down here, you're going to get some nonsense numbers right now because our table here is still blank. We'll fix that. And I'll explain what these things are doing um, as we figure them out. So let's see. Right here, you can see some issues right away. These are in um, dollar amounts, but those are months and years. You can go to Format, Number, Plane. So it's still going to be nonsense, but you can essentially turn off the fact that it's a currency. You don't want a currency for time. Now, how is this going to work? This table is a little bit different than the last one we saw. You're actually going to be typing in the year that you're in. So there's 12 months as a freshman, let's say. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Even though the school year itself isn't as a uh, freshman, we're going to think about the full calendar year uh, as a freshman to keep track of what's going on. The idea is you start off with $2,000, that's your principal, and it actually stays as $2,000 here because we're always, this is simple interest, so that that money is not going to build up just yet, right? We're just, we're taking interest on that $2,000. It doesn't compound, as you'll see happen in the plus in private loans. And in this case, the 0.23%, we're calling to sell B6, which I have right here, B6, 2.75%. We divide it by 365 for the days of the year and multiply it by 30 for the billing cycle, not the days of a month. Not every month has 30 days, but the billing cycle. All right, so I get this 0.23%, and that's going to be constant. So we just drag that down. And then here, the monthly interest in dollars, it's a new, new column. It's taking, if you look at the formula, G2 times F2. So taking your monthly interest times your principal and showing you as a freshman each year, you have $4.52 in interest per month. Not too bad. Now, for some loans, you I think government loans apply. You can actually pay them off, but we'll assume you're not going to be doing that. And the balance here, this column, is I, it's, it's just $2,000 plus that interest of $4.52 after the first month. But it's a little weird to count it that way, so... Um, what I'm going to say is, for now, this is not building, the balance just equals the principal, right? Because as we talked about with loans, this interest is not going to be capitalized yet. In other words, this interest is not going to be added onto your loan until after the grace period. So technically, your principal balance is still $2,000. The interest does have to be paid off, so you could add that in, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Now, sophomore year... Uh, you take out another loan, and with every year, you're going to be taking out another $2,000 in loans. So let's set that up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, just so you can see what this looks like. 13, 14, okay, let's get that. So here, this is our sophomore year. I don't want to bold it. I don't know what's like that. And you could just type in 4,000, but you want your spreadsheet to be dynamic so that... If you change values in your front sheet, it, it then changes all the values here. 
So instead of just typing in 2000, like up here, I didn't type 2000, I typed equals B2, right? And I put those dollar signs in there, so it would always refer to B2. I'm just going to also add the next cell, which is dollar sign B, dollar sign 3. In other words, those loans from um, freshman and sophomore year. And I'm not, this is kind of a weird format, so let's just reset that. And let's go to Arial. I uh, really messed the format up there, I'm not sure what happened. Click on this, center it up. Okay, it looks better. And I just drag this down. And the interest, okay, it's still the same amount. Now, if I'm losing formatting here, there's nothing to worry about. We'll fix that at the end. Okay, this is going to go up now. Now it's $9 per month of interest that's being added. We're still not going to pay anything off. And this time, you can say, well, your balance is 4000 And then it kind of repeats itself. Same for junior and senior year. So I'll do that real quick. Let's set up a junior year. Okay. Uh, that's about 12. Let's see. Okay. 23, 24. Let's just see how far that went. All right. One year too far. 12 months in every year. So senior year starts here. Okay. And let's see how close I got. 48. One more to go. So this is our senior year, and I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting some weird bolding, so I'm just going to click the top here, the columns, I don't want to bold that. All right, so senior year, you graduate, yay. Now you have what's called deferment. And I don't think I just spelled that right. Deferment. That looks better. So deferment, um, you're not going to be paying off the bill because you're deferring the payment of the loan. Now... It depends on the loan and the rules at the time you, you um, take the loan out, but usually there's a grace period of about six months. So let's assume for this model that you decide to not pay your bill for six months. You're going to defer it. All right, you talk to the loan company, they let you do that, yay. That means you're not paying it. What's going to happen? Well, here, let's go back. Junior year, this formula is going to change slightly. We're going to add the third year loans, dollar sign B, dollar sign 4. Drag it down. Don't worry about the formatting. We'll fix that color coding there. And then senior year, same thing. So I'm actually going to drag the formula down and just add 2, 3, and 4, and 5. All right. And here. Let's drag it down. And that's going to stay as 8,000 right through deferment. Now, at the end of deferment, capitalization will happen. So let's just drag these down so I can explain that. Notice I went to the right there before I dragged down, and I can fill all those cells at once. Now, this, this row right here, I'm going to have a step called capitalization. Now, the idea is you have to talk to your loan officers about this, but basically, if you don't pay off the loan interest, before capitalization, what happens is all of these interest payments here in this column, these interest amounts, excuse me, get added to your principal. So let's do that. Let's say our what our balance is going to be equal to um, this number right here, F55, whatever is there, plus the sum of all of these interest payments here. So I just select them all, close parentheses, and there I've got $650 essentially gets added onto your principal balance. For the capitalization, right, we've got the principal plus all those interest payments there. Um, and then the ending balance, I'm going to say just equals that amount, right? Nothing's changing. There's no beginning or any of the month, but it's going to help us in our formula. So for, for this now, for the next line, we actually start our repayment on our 55th month. And the starting balance is going to be equal to the ending balance of the last pay period above it. And then the interest rate is still the same. The monthly interest is still calculated the same way. And the payments, uh, I have it, at, I believe, in B7. So I do dollar sign B, dollar sign 7. And the ending balance is always going to equal what? It's going to equal the starting balance plus the monthly interest minus whatever monthly payment we give. All right, so you can see what's happened here. Um, right, we started at 8650. Now we have 8570. 
basically took the starting balance, added the interest, and took away the payment, and then we just repeat the process. So I can actually, I'm just going to type in a 56 there, and then we'll just drag these down. And I'm starting to get a nice representation of the repayment process, and I just now kind of drag and repeat. See, and I went too far already. So here you can see we're from 37 to negative 62. So we're paying too much. So I'm going to delete the other cells. On the first negative line, I'm just going to change the repayment right here. The payment doesn't need to be $100 because we only owed $37 plus the eight cents of interest. So it should just equal the starting balance from that month plus the interest, and that brings us to zero. Now if we scroll up here, we can see how the numbers are working out. Okay, so we took 97 months to pay off the loan. I took the max of this column, E, subtracted those 54 months, that's the four years plus six months of deferment, and that gives me 97 months to pay this, which is, if you divide by 12, about eight years. And let's just re let's fix the total interest, delete this. And total paid on direct subsidized loans. So this is actually the wrong formula. This is some HH because that was an old formula I had there. I want to actually add up, um, in this case, total paid, all of the things in column I. So that'll be fixed on your template, right? So that should be some I and I. Put an I there. Put an I there. And you can see that we paid up $9,000 for this loan, which is $1,637 of interest. So uh, this is interesting, right? The, with the subsidized loans, we actually ended up paying more in interest. That's because of the larger amount in the loan. If you change this to $19,000, I guarantee you will see a much larger amount of loans being paid. But here, it's interesting that we actually have a smaller amount um, a smaller percentage of our total loan amount than we did in the last case. All right, hope that helped.